A new patent proves that Ford has lost their marbles. Seriously. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. Hope you've had an amazing morning, day, night, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Hope things are going well for you. This year, really, honestly, it's going to be an amazing year. And I keep saying this, but it's true. It's true. EVs are coming out, more and more of them, especially for my friends over there in the United States. Now, I've never told you this, but I actually follow the Dallas Mavericks. Why? I'm a big fan of Luka Doncic. I'm also a big fan of some other NBA players, baseball, football. I don't know what it is. I just have always loved, in particular, the NBA. So I'll be gunning for Dallas in the playoffs. By the way, I've never actually been to Dallas. What's it like? Let me know in the comments section below. I have been to quite a number of other places in the US. In fact, I rode my bicycle from Seattle down to Mexico, down the West Coast, and that was a pretty amazing trip. I actually made a video about that. I'll put a link in the description below where I talked about that trip. I rode my bike around the world for a year, and honestly, that was an amazing journey. I absolutely love my experience in America. A lot of people criticize America, and I'm like, you haven't been there, mate. Shut up. Go there, and you'll have a different story to say. People were really friendly to us. We're riding down the West Coast, over a little pass called the Devil's Pass, I think it's called, wasn't too far away from San Francisco, a bit, a couple of hours north, I think it was, and it was howling wind, serious wind. We're struggling to stay in a straight line. We're talking where we're on the edge of this like little cliff along the ocean. It was pouring rain, and it started to thunder, and then lightning came out, and there was nowhere for us to go, nowhere for us to hide. We we're just standing on the side of the road, going, "What are we going to do?" And honestly, I felt so dejected. I felt like I'm freezing cold. I'm starving. I'm exhausted. I had I actually had the flu. I was sick at the time. And then this lady pulls over and she says, hey, get in. She was driving this van. She picked us up, took us to her house. And she had a an Airstream caravan in the back of her house. And she said to us, you know what? Stay here for a few days. This storm's going to be here for three or four days. Stay here and you can stay out of the storm. And we got to know this lady. And that was just one of the experiences that we had in America where, you know what? People treated us so well. It was amazing. You know what? I didn't have that experience when I was riding my bike in Australia. People in Australia were a little bit more aggressive. They weren't, they weren't as friendly. So I've always said to people many times that I was very thankful for my experience in America where I thought, you know what? It was an example for me that I should treat people that way if I find people, travelers who need help. Like getting back to my story, and I feel sort of like I'm criticizing Ford lately, but I don't know what to say. Like, why are they doing this? Ford needs every cent they can get. They need every cent they can get to try and survive the oncoming tsunami, the incredible disruption happening this very decade that they're well aware of is happening, but yet they're clearly investing millions of dollars into hydrogen technology. And I'm not talking hydrogen fuel cells. I'm talking hydrogen engines. Seriously, you can't make this stuff up. Now, a new Ford patent shows it is working on hydrogen engines. It's actually a combustion engine that will run on hydrogen, similar to the project that Toyota has been working on with Yamaha. Now, this patent isn't your normal hydrogen-powered fuel vehicle, which uses a propulsion system that converts energy stored as hydrogen to electricity via a fuel cell, which, if you didn't already know this, it's finished, even for heavy trucking. A lot of people think it'll work in heavy trucking. They think that's the, the future of heavy trucking. Well, sorry, my friends, it is not. It's not happening. That pipe dream is over. And I've got a video coming on that, why that's over, but why that's a good thing. Because electric trucks, my friends, are going to be amazing. Now, BYD, by the way, just secured the largest electric truck order in history of the world, in the history of the world. That was placed in the US. So great news there for BYD. And by the way, if you're thinking, oh, that's terrible because BYD is a Chinese company. Well, by the way, actually, everyone making those electric trucks is employed in America. They're Americans. BYD has a headquarters, a plant in California where they make the electric trucks and they make electric buses as well. Now, Ford Motor Company has filed a patent for a turbocharged combustion engine that runs on hydrogen. Sounds kind of complex to me. Muscle cars and truck initially discovered and reported on this patent. Now noted on that patent was Ford's engine will be capable of operating across a wide range of air fuel lambda, which is the Greek letter used to represent a fuel's stoichiometric value 
as 1.00 with values depending on torque demands. MCT noted that internal exhaust gas recirculation and valve timing will be used to control combustion. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the reality is internal combustion engines are staggeringly complicated. And I mean staggeringly complicated. If you compare the simplicity of an electric vehicle to that of an internal combustion engine vehicle, they are just worlds apart. And that's why, for those of you who don't know, actually electric vehicles were the pretty much the first kind of vehicles to be invented and built back in 1893. However, obviously at the time, they didn't have very long ranges. So even though they were sold in their thousands in the 1910s and the 1920s, they eventually fell out of favor. MCT quickly touched upon the importance of stoichiometric fuel value of a fuel, which is the ratio by which all the fuel is mixed with all the oxygen to produce a competitive burn. Ford's new method of turbocharged hydrogen will explore lambda values in excess of 2.00. So in other words, higher efficiency. This means that the new engine will be able to operate in an extremely lean state and use more than double the amount of air required for the stoichiometric combustion of hydrogen. I'll put a link in the description below where you can read more about how this works. So in the patent, Ford claimed that hydrogen combustion engines, or their hydrogen combustion engine, could be part of a hybrid powertrain and showed an example that included a motor generator unit placed between the engine and transmission. However, Ford said that it would be used in parallel a series or a series parallel hybrid vehicle. Can you imagine the complexity here? Not only is it internal combustion engine, not only is it turbocharged, then they're making it run extremely lean with an incredible high boost pressure. Obviously, we know the issues that come from running internal combustion engines on lean fuel mixes. What happens? Well, massive amounts of heat and inevitably turbos blow. But obviously, there's a lot of you on the channel that know more about than I do. However, the idea, the point I'm making here is combining that with the idea of a plug-in hybrid, you're adding so much complexity to a car. I just can't understand the logic behind why Ford thinks this would be a winner. The patent only covers Ford's method of combusting and controlling the hydrogen mix. And the company will have to work out how to create an engine design that is able to actually use this method. That is assuming they haven't already created one. Now I'm assuming that they've probably already created one considering the fact they've filed this patent. In addition, the patent includes direct injection for delivering hydrogen to the cylinders, which could produce up to 15% more power than a gas engine. So direct injection, as you know, it sounds great in theory. It does cause better fuel efficiency, but it also causes clogged up injectors. And people have reported numerous problems with direct injection, said they wish their cars didn't have it. So, I mean, I don't know about what your thoughts are on that, but I personally think this vehicle sounds like one of the most complex powertrains in the history of the automobile. I just can't understand why Ford would think, you know what? Everyone's transferring to electric vehicles. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, of, if not trillions of dollars, will be invested this decade on moving towards electric vehicles. And Ford's going, hey, you know what? Let's make a hydrogen engine that'll run more lean than any engine in the history of mankind. Give it direct injection, make it turbocharged, combine it with a battery to make it plug in hybrid. And guess what? We're onto a winner here. I mean, realistically, where are they going to get the hydrogen to even power these things? I don't understand. Someone please explain this to me in the comment section below because my small brain just cannot work out what the boffins at Ford are thinking by you know, designing this monstrously complex vehicle right at a period in history where the Ford company has, you have to know, their debt levels. Their debt is off the charts. Don't get me wrong, they're still making profit, but they have to keep making a profit to service their astronomical debt while they... What are they going to do, right, over the next five, six, ten years, right? They're going to have to write off billions of dollars of losses for their internal combustion engine vehicle production lines and factories, where those factories are purpose-built to make vehicles that won't exist in a decade from now. And they're going, you know what, oh, let's just get distracted by building the most complex vehicle in the history of mankind. Personally, I'm absolutely baffled. This is the best possible case scenario. Best possible case. Someone had to finish years long research, doing a PhD or something maybe, with a presentable result. In order to justify the millions of dollars invested into that research, Ford decided to go and get a patent. Hey look, here's a patent justifying the work we've done. So now they can go and work on something actually useful. Best case scenario, that's what happens. Worst case scenario, Ford keeps on working on this thinking they're onto a winner. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye-bye.